Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thanks so much for watching today. I'm trying some new makeup products. So I was on a no buy for January and then February rolled around and I was like, purchase, 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 purchase. And I got sick in the middle. So now I have like a huge collection of products that I have yet to try that are sitting on my desktop. So we're trying some of them today. One of them is this. This is the new L'Oreal True Match. Now here's where I wonder, is this actually a reformulation or is it just a repackaging and reintroduction? Don't forget about us. Okay, so for years at the drugstore, I could never find a shade that was light enough. The lightest shade was always too dark for me. And that's why I never wore foundation as a kid because there was not a shade light enough for me at the drugstore. There was not a shade light enough for me even at like the clinic and long comb counters. And of course, over the last decade, probably the last five plus years, brands have been expanding their shade range um, and they've been doing it on both ends, which is fantastic. But for the longest time, True Match was one of the few formulations you could find at the drugstore in the widest range of shades. So I'm not sure if this is a reformulation or if it's just like, look, new packaging. We heard you. We put it in a pump because that little teeny tiny silver screw off lid is the reason I never purchased this. I was like, I am not paying $15 or $12, or however much it was for a foundation that to pour out into my hand. Those days are over. Everything comes with a pump now. So um, I picked up the lightest neutral shade. It's 0.5N. They have a 0.5 warm, a 0.5 cool, but I got the lightest neutral shade. I nearly forgot that I need a little bit of corrector underneath the eyes. Um, and I don't think that's gonna affect the way this foundation looks, but it's basically making sure that my under eyes aren't like zombie eyes. I'm still getting over being sick. I'm still dealing <clears throat> with a lot of phlegm and my voice breaks occasionally and um, my sleep is not as good as it could be because I'm still getting awakened in the middle of the night with a coughing fit, but I'm feeling much better and I'm like, let's look like a person today. Much of this month has been spent makeup free because I have been feeling like death warmed over. All right, so I put a little bit on this palette. Um, I'm going to start just dotting it around the face and then we'll blend it in. I'm gonna smooth it out with my fingers just to kind of distribute it a little bit more. Um, I have this going up on top of the Danessa Myricks Blurring Balm Powder. I'm using it as primer today and I wanna see how this does. So I'm trying to get into the habit of using primers more regularly for my eyes and my face. It has kind of like not been my my mode up to this point, but I'm trying to change. So now I'm just taking a damp beauty sponge and just kind of pouncing it in. I feel like this is actually a really good shade match. I feel like it, it looks like me. I just made like a small partial pump. This is great. I feel like the farther along we get, the better pumps get. For the longest time, there were the pumps, I remember Mac had them, where you were like struggling, struggling, and then you finally started to depress it and went all the way to the bottom and you always got a full pump. Oh, hated that. Um, but I'm adding just a little bit more here to my chin area. This is where I have some darkness right here from post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation from acne, and then some redness on the center of my chin. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this and I feel like it does a really good job of kind of building on itself. Okay, here's where I wanna know. Have you been a True Match fan for years? Because I know when this came out to the drugstore with like 32, 33 shades, it was a really big deal because nobody had that many shades. And then now I think there are 47 shades, which for the drugstore is amazing. Does it give everyone an option? Probably not, but I feel like it includes a ton more people than it used to. Where I feel like this is a really beautiful, a beautiful foundation. I feel like this kind of rivals the, what is it, the Age Perfect, the serum foundation. Now the serum foundation is gonna be a little bit glowier, but it, I feel like this is just as lightweight. I feel like it's just as skin-like quality, but it is a little bit less radiant, a little bit less glowy, but I don't mind that. It's not matte. It's definitely not a matte foundation. It looks very skin-like and natural, but I feel like it is buildable where I need it a little bit more on my chin. Sometimes I'll go in with concealer there. I don't feel like I need it today. I did add a little bit more um, right here where I have redness around the corners of my nose. I feel like it's not instantly settling into the expression lines in my forehead. Now I will set that area with powder, I always do, because any foundation, any foundation at all, 
always settles into my dynamic facial lines, like the places that move the most. My forehead, like my nasal labial fold, corners of my nose, I have a lot of movement in that area of my face, and I find that if I don't set it there, it's gonna happen. And the older I get, the more and more likely that is to happen. Now, there are some products that the minute I put it on my face, I'm just finishing pouncing out here, and it's already settling into my wrinkles in my forehead. I don't see that happening here. I feel like this actually looks really good and I think overall is a really good match for me. All right, so I'm gonna put on concealer, powder, maybe a little bit of bronzer, eyebrows, and I'll be right back. I fully powdered my face today, so it does change the look of the foundation because I'm using powder products. I am using the Micro Suede Bronzing Powder from Make. This is the second lightest shade. This one here is in Lunar for bronzer, but for blush, oh, hello. RMS Beauty, now these came out last year but RMS has these beautiful Hydra Powder Blushes. These are officially called the Redimension Hydra Powder Blush. I have the shade Pomegranate Fizz. The first one I picked up that I've been actually wearing a lot and really enjoying is this one right here. This one's in Maiden's Kiss. This one's a little bit browner. It's got a little bit of pink to it. Let me swatch them both for you and um, probably wear a combo of both of these today. So here is Pomegranate Fizz and here is Maiden's Kiss. And what I really like about these is you can build these up. I, I found that to be true. I don't know about the Pomegranate, that's the new one. But I really have liked this Maiden's Kiss. I'm gonna start with this and I'm gonna start with the brush I've been using with it. So it's just the same color on this brush. Um, and I find that this is one of those because there is a little bit of, a little bit of glow to it. I wouldn't say it's like a highlighty but it has some warmth and some blush tones to it because the difference between this and this is, I think, huge. Um, but it's not a complete flat matte, and I like that. So I'm gonna put this on both cheeks, and then I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the pomegranate fizz just like on the apples of the cheeks. I don't wanna get too much on this, but I do want just a little, Oh wow, yeah. This is one of those I feel like if you have fair skin, like beware and blend, blend, blend but I do really like a super fleshy cheek. I'm gonna take it up towards the temples a little bit and just really take my time in blending. And just to make sure that everything doesn't look harsh, I'm going to take a finishing powder. I've been using this one from Beauty Pie. This is their One Powder Wonder in Exquisite Light. And I'm just gonna kind of go all over the cheek area with this. It's just gonna help just kind of blur it all together and make sure it doesn't look too harsh. And I'm going over the entire face with whatever is left on my brush, but it's really very, very little, just kind of to blend this area. I already feel like that looks a ton better. I did show you in a previous video this new lip gloss balm hybrid from RMS called their Lip Lights. It's a new formula for them. And when I was making a purchase on the RMS website, when I was picking up the new blush, because this is really what took me back to the website. It was like, I want to get another one of these Redimension Hydra blushes. I'm like, they're just gorgeous. So while I was there, if you spent a certain amount, they had this special gift. And this is a limited edition gift. I don't know if you can still get it, but it's the Dressed Up Red Edit. So basically, Basically, it's a lip lights in a red shade with a red pencil. It comes with a turnkey because if you're buying the lip lights on its own, you have to pay $5 extra to get the key and a pencil sharpener, which I think is really cool. So um, this is one I think they already have in their collection. This one is called Pavla Red. That's a really pretty color. I feel like it leans a little bit more berry. And the new lip lights is called Babette. I like the way it feels. And this is definitely more of an orangey red on the lip compared to the pencil. I really like the shine that I get from the lip lights. I find that I get about two hours of wear. Um, it is hydrating on my lips. Um, it's not the most hydrating thing I put on my lips, but I feel like for a tinted product, it's nice. The problem I'm having is just ease of like carrying it around. This is not the sort of thing that it's easy to put in your purse, to put in your pocket, to you know carry with you. I'm worried that since it's a metal tube, if it gets banged up inside my handbag, it's gonna crack, it's gonna break, and then I'm gonna have product coming out of like where it cracks and breaks in the tube itself. Um, the other thing that I've noticed is when I kept um, this one in my pocket, guess what happened? Oh, oh my goodness, look at this. I just noticed this. The lid 
is broken. Oh, that's so sad. Looks like the lid actually cracked right along the seam and product is coming out there. See, this is why these aren't probably good for any place other than your makeup desk. Um, I, I know that RMS is really into sustainable, recyclable packaging. Uh, metal tubes are endlessly recyclable. Um, the little plastic caps, you can recycle those as well. I appreciate that aspect of not creating more long-term waste, but if it's not really functioning, mm, that's kind of sad. I, I do like the way these have been feeling, and you can tell by how used and abused this guy is. I've been using this one a lot since I got it, um, but I'm I would not put these any place other than where you keep your regular makeup stores. Because if you plop this in a pocket or you put it in your purse, maybe it's not the tube that's going to fail, but like the lid. Because it, it really is just like coming apart right here. Oh, that's a shame. I like the way that it feels. I do feel that it's nourishing. It doesn't, it's not the most nourishing. I don't know. I don't know. I really was curious about the red one. But truthfully, this right here is almost sealing the deal that I, I probably wouldn't recommend these. They're nice. They're interesting. I feel like they're a really nice product, but I feel like the packaging is, is not really, although it is sustainable, it's not sustainable for daily life. All right. So the other thing that comes in those same type of metal um, tubes are their eyelights. I got a trio of eyelights. All right, I got three shades. Let me swatch them for you. My daughter and I were kind of ooing and eyeing over these on the website. Ooh, look, see? Like, if you're not careful, it just comes right out. Once it's warm, they just, they just ooh right out. <gasps> ah, it won't stop. It won't stop. Okay, so one of them wouldn't stop. <laughs> oh. This one is strobe. This one is flare. And this one is spark. They're really pretty colors. I like this cool kind of metallic-y, almost, I don't know, it's like a minky taupe color. Um, really pretty warm shades as well. The one thing that they say about these is that they dry quickly and you gotta blend fast. So this is a one eye at a time. I did put the excess on my palette. Look how much came out. And that was just because the minute I opened it up, it was the first time it had been opened. There must be an air pocket in there and it was just forcing product out. I know we're trying to be sustainable with the packaging, but I feel like the packaging is a fail. I really feel like the packaging is a fail. I'm going to use a brush and use it on my palette. It says that you can mix these with other shades. Um, I think that's really cool. And that they're supposed to be sheer enough for like day wear and buildable for evening. So let's start with a light wash and see what we get. I feel like these go on really well with just a finger. This is definitely drying quickly, so definitely one eye at a time. I think that if you don't do that, you might be in trouble. I'm going to add a little bit more to the center of the lid. We want a little bit more shine and light. I'm going to do that to the other side as well. I'm really curious to see if a clean brush can kind of help blend the edge here without getting any fallout. I don't feel like there's a lot of particles in this to be like falling below the eye, but I do feel like that can kind of blend the edge a little bit so it's not quite such a stark end to the color. I'm also going to grab a slightly smaller brush and just run some underneath the lower lash line. It's kind of softly smudged in. I do like a little sparkle. Hello. I finally picked up a sample size of the Tarte Tartlet Tubing Mascara. I've heard nothing but good stuff about this. You know I love a tubing mascara. Here's what the wand looks like. It has some of those silicone bristles, which I feel is really good for length, for definition, and that's usually what we get from a tubing mascara. So my lashes are already curled. I'm just gonna start wiping this on. Difference between mascara and no mascara. Well, I really like the way this looks. I think this is a really nice mascara. I really like the way this mascara looks. I feel like it has some nice length. It did build a little bit of volume. It's not my favorite for the lower lashes, but you know, it's. I think it's actually really good. I'll be interested to see how easy it is to remove most tubing mascaras, a little bit of warm water, and they just pull right off. 
Um, I'm hoping that's what this is going to be. This is a little bit more expensive if you get a full size. I think it's what, $24, $25. This is definitely a high-end mascara and there are more affordable drugstore versions. But the difference is I haven't really found a super affordable, easy to find at the drugstore mascara that all of a sudden delivers the sort of quality that I'm getting from higher end tubing formulas. Let me know if you have a favorite tubing formula, what yours is in the comment section down below. I really like the way this look turned out. I like the look that I'm getting from the eyes. That eye light is so pretty. I just wish the packaging was different. I feel like this type of packaging is has potential for fail. Like if there is a crack in the metal tube, if it has the same problem with this lid that this one did, like mm, it's gonna be a problem. I really feel like the product is so good, there has to be a better way to get it from point A to point B. That's all I'm saying. I am really excited about having more of these. Um, I really like the first one I got, and I didn't mention it earlier, but these are actually refillable. So you can buy just this and put it in one of these, and I think that is fabulous. This is the sort of sustainability that makes sense to me. I know they put them in this sort of packaging for recyclability, you know, but you can still recycle the plastic. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm struggling with this choice, but I really feel like this is nice. Um, I also super impressed with this. I feel like it's a really good skin match for me. And I will leave some wear notes in the description box to how these products were today, especially the highlights. You know, do I get any flaking? Do I get any creasing? And how she wore all day. But I, I don't know, this is really good. This is surprising me. And I should not be surprised by a good drugstore foundation, but it's been a while since I've met one. I would love to know if you have tried the reformulation of the True Match, if you've tried any of these RMS products, let me know in the comment section down below. Tell me how they're working for you. Thank you so, so much for watching today. Have a fantastic day and I will see you again soon.